Hey guys, welcome to video 41. I thought today I would grab a handful of MPF 102 JFETs and experimentally determine their IDSS and VGS off values. And what I intend to do is compile all this data and just take an average, plot the curves, and we'll use that data whenever we're using the MPF 102 in uh, future applications. All right, before we look at the experimental circuit, let's just uh, take a look at some of the parameters here on the Motorola data sheet. Uh, the actual full data sheet for the MPF 102 is pretty long. It's about 10 or 12 pages long, and it's got a lot of information that we're really not interested in at this point. So we're just going to take a look at the ones we've discussed so far. And the first one we come to here is IGSS. That's the gate leakage current. And it's got a maximum value of negative 2 nanoamps. So we're pretty well justified in disregarding that in the applications we're looking at. Uh, VGS off doesn't have a minimum value listed, but the max is negative 8 volts. I've never seen one that high, but I guess it can happen. And finally, the IDSS value for the MPF-102 can range from 2 milliamps to as high as 20 milliamps. I've never seen one as high as 20. I've seen a few done at the uh, 2 milliamp range though. So most of the MPF 102s are going to be more down towards the lower end of the IDSS range. All right, the rest of these parameters, uh, we'll be talking about them in the next video. So for right now, let's just go on over and take a look at the experimental setup I'm going to use. Right here, we've got our device under test, DUT. And I'm using a 10K potentiometer set up as a variable voltage divider to apply a VGS bias. If it's set to zero, we should get maximum drain current IDSS flowing. And I'm going to determine that by reading the voltage drop across a 1K ohm uh, drain resistor. That way I can read milliamps directly in volts. And uh, here is my setup. VGS is going to be displayed on this left hand meter the drain current on the right hand. And you can see here in this particular example with VGS set to zero, I get 7.78 milliamps of drain current. So that would be the IDSS value. Then I would adjust the pot and monitor VGS and I sub D until the drain current drops to zero. That would be my VGS off value. Here I've got 10 uh, MPF 102s and we're just gonna step through them measuring these parameters, recording them. I'll average them out and plot the data and we'll see what we come up with. All right, so let's get on that next. Okay, so here's our 10 randomly selected MPF 102 JFETs. The left hand meter is gonna be reading VGS. The right hand meter will read drain current in milliamps and this potentiometer will be used to adjust VGS. So let's see what we get with our first JFET. All right, since there's no VGS applied, the current flowing is IDSS, and let's call that about eight, uh, eh, 7.8 milliamps, I'd say. All right, now we're gonna increase our VGS value negatively until our drain current drops to zero, then that will be our VGS off on the left-hand meter. So let's see, uh, we're getting down there pretty good. Uh, we're down to, oh boy, there we go. Let's, let's call that negative three volts, okay? So our VGS off for this first JFET is negative three volts. All right, we'll turn our bias voltage back to zero. And let's swap in our next JFET and see what we get here. And come on. There we go. Uh, this one's got an IDSS of about 5.5 milliamps. And let's see what we get for VGS off. Um, oh, oh. There we go. We're already down there about negative 2.2 volts, let's call it. Negative 2.2 volts. And I'm just gonna work my way down the line and record the data. Uh, I'm not gonna make you sit through that. 
but uh, I'll have it all collected here in a minute and we'll be using it. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, I'm back and it's been less than a second in YouTube time, but significantly longer in my time. But I compiled all of the data for the FETs and plotted some curves and this is what I came up with. All right, if we look at the test values first, the maximum IDSS I got was 7.8 milliamps with a corresponding VGS off of negative three volts. The lowest IDSS I measured was three milliamps and that FET had a VGS off of negative 1.5 volts. So I averaged my IDSS values and came up with six milliamps. The average VGS off value was negative 2.5 volts. So I plotted that transconductance curve here, and then I took that curve, scaled it appropriately, and put it on this drain curve graph. And these are the drain curves that I came up with for the typical MPF-102. So when we reference the MPF-102 in future videos, either for analysis problems or some designs of an amplifier or whatever, these are the values that I'll use to characterize the MPF-102. Now what I'd like to do next is take a look at the graphs of some of these curves for the data that I've measured. And I'm going to use a uh, program called Desmos. This is an online equation graphing package. It's really nice and easy to use. And what I'm going to do is enter the values for Shockley's equation here and plot some of these uh, transconductance curves and we'll do some comparisons here. So let's start with the first one. We had an IDSS of 7.8 milliamps. So we're going to have 0 0.0078 times 1 minus VGS is going to be the X value, so it's just X divided by VP, which is negative 3, and then we're going to square that. And here's our transconductance curve for this first set of measurements, okay? Now notice that Desmos is going past uh, the vertex of the parabola. Normally, our JFETS data just stops right here but the calculator shows all of it. And we'll see a way to get rid of that in a minute, but let me do uh, the next one here. Suppose we have 5.5 milliamps, that's 0 0.0055 times one minus X divided by VGS off is negative 2.3, and that is squared. So there's the parabola for our second JFET. All right, let's do, uh, how about this one down here at 4.6 milliamps, okay? So let's do that one. So we got 0 0.0046 times one minus X divided by negative two squared. And there's our third device. And let's do one more. Let's do this uh, three milliamp device down here. So we'll come down here, we'll enter 0 0.003 times 1 minus x divided by negative 1.5 squared. And, uh, oops, I got an extra decimal point here. Let me get rid of that. And add the correct number of zeros here. 0, 0, 003, there we go. So that's a, a kind of a cool characteristic of this software is it lets you see the graphs on the fly as you change parameters in the equations. Pretty cool. Now, what I'd like to do is get rid of this uh, extraneous information to the left of the vertex for each of our parabolas because that's just a distraction. Remember, this is a quadratic, so it has two solutions. Uh, when we plot the ID times RS line on the graph, uh, the second solution would be where we intersect the parabolas up here somewhere. But the JFET doesn't work up there. It stops at the vertex. So what I'm going to do to eliminate this extraneous information is just put a decimal point and add a couple of zeros. And what happens then is the parabola has a complex value once we pass the vertex. And the software doesn't plot it at all. So we just get the portion that we're interested in. So I'm going to do that on all of these exponents. I just add a little bit extra to it. It doesn't change the value of the uh, function very much at all, but it does get rid of this extra stuff that we don't need. So 
Let's do that to all of these, okay? And there we go. Now we've gotten rid of the extraneous information. And the thing I want you to notice is that for a given FET, so the MPF 102 in this case, when we plot the equation based on IDSS and VGS off, we get similar parabolas. That is, each of these parabolas is just a scaled version of the other ones. And that's a really useful uh, characteristic that I'm going to talk about in the next video a little bit more. But it's something that allows us to establish a bias point that's always at the same relative position on our drain current axis. I know that doesn't really make much sense right now, but the takeaway from this is that we do get similar parabolas, okay? And these are based on real experimental data that I gathered, so, you know, this is the real deal here, okay? And we're going to use this information in the next video, but for right now, I thought this was kind of an interesting uh, little side excursion, and this is a cool software package you might want to uh, mess around with a little bit on your own, okay? And I'll see you guys in the next video.